In the differential staining, we can distinguish cellular structures according to their affinity for basic dyes, acids, or a mixture of both. When placing the smear under the microscope, it is convenient to initially determine which area of the smear we are observing – head, body, or tail. As we scan the sample, we are able to see the appearance of the cells. In the head of the sample, the area in which the drop was placed, a great cellularity is observed. The erythrocytes will be very close, forming aggregates, and the coloration becomes greyish. This zone should be avoided in order to be able to distinguish the different cell types present. As we scan the sample in the direction of extension, the concentration of cells will decrease. The optimum area will be the center or body of the smear. The cells are more separated and the actual coloration acquired by the blood smear can be seen with gym staining. Red blood cells appear pink, leukocytes show the nuclei stained in purple, and the cytoplasm in pale pink. As you will expect, the most abundant cell type is the erythrocyte. It represents 99% of the blood cells. They are flexible and bioconcave discs. They lack a cell nucleus. That shape is the one that causes a clear halo at the center of the cell when the light of the microscope crosses it. This morphology provides essential properties for physiological cell function, such as deformability and stability while traveling the circulatory system, and specifically the capillary network. In addition, it maximizes the surface for cellular gas exchange. As you can see in the right image, the erythrocytes of other species may have different characteristics. In this case, an ellipsodile and nucleated erythrocyte extension is shown very different from the human ones. At a higher magnification, the erythrocyte morphology is clearly seen. White blood cells, also called leukocytes, are shown. They are the cells of the immune system that are involved in protecting the body against both infectious disease and foreign invaders. Monocytes are the largest type of leukocyte. They contain kidney-shaped lobed nuclei and these cells are able to migrate to tissues where they will differentiate into tissue macrophages when needed. We continue scanning the preparation and looking at the cell types present. Lymphocyte is the smallest of the leukocytes. Its nucleus is spherical and occupies almost all of the cytoplasm. Although different types of lymphocytes exist, such as B cells, T cells, and natural killers, immunohistochemical techniques are required to differentiate them. Granulocytes, also called polymorphonuclear leukocytes, are characterized by the presence of granules in the cytoplasm. They are divided into three types according to the staining characteristics of the granules – neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. The most abundant in human blood are neutrophils, whose granules are not observed with this type of staining. Eosinophils and basophils are less frequent. Platelets can also be found, which are cytoplasmic fragments of the precursor cell, the megakarocyte. They are actively involved in clotting and may be found isolated or clotted. They are infrequent in these samples because the smear 
was quickly drawn right after the blood extraction. Here, a polymorphonuclear cell can be seen characterized by having abundant granules that do not allow us to see the polymorphic nucleus. It is a basophil. If it is observed with a hundredfold magnification objective, its bluish granules can be seen, since they have been stained with the basic methylene blue dye present in the gene's staining. With a hundredfold magnification objective, the previously described cellular types can be observed in more detail.